Welcome back. Um, I think I mentioned it quickly in a previous video, but the real purpose of why we're learning to do the double bond uh, with the functional group is we're going to use combination of these elements in multiple ways in the near future. And then knowing how to do double bonds for functional groups makes your life way too simple. And then when we learn spectroscopy down the road in the coursework, you will be presented with infrared or NMR or mass spec. And then in those cases, being able to create a wide variety of isomers yourself makes your life way too simple. You know what I mean when we get there, but knowing the knowledge is very, very important. And then what foundation knowledge do I need? Well, you we've already done the carbon, hydrogen, and halogen so knowing basically how to calculate double bonds and adding that new knowledge is all you're really going to do so with oxygen okay i have this note here oxygen can connect one oxygen can connect to any element including another oxygen through either one double bond or two single bonds this is important because you inhale oxygen every single day, every single minute, every single second. So it's important you know oxygen itself, which is O2, looks like this. If you see, one oxygen is attached to another oxygen, which is another element or an element of its own kind through a double bond. But if you actually look at methanol, okay, so we write, but we know that from our understanding that carbon is attached to oxygen, oxygen is attached to hydrogen, and the three hydrogen is attached to the carbon, right? In the oxygen elemental case, we see that, that an oxygen is attached to another element, which in this case is an oxygen itself through a double bond. But in the case of methanol, again, we haven't learned nomenclature of alcohols yet, but I just gave that example just to prove my point that an oxygen in this case is attached to Two elements, what I mean by two single bond is essentially, it's, when it is two single bonds, it has to be two separate elements or two different elements. So in this case, you see that oxygen is attached through two single bonds. Here, it's one double bond, okay? But the rule of thumb is oxygen cannot have more than two bonds. Okay, that's the rule, just like how carbon cannot have more than four bonds, oxygen cannot ever have more than two bonds, and that's obvious here. So depending on what the dB value, you can say whether your compound containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen can have a double bond or a single bond O. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. And when I finish this, I'm gonna do both of these quickly in a single video. You would want to do a side-by-side -side comparison after you take your notes, then you would see apparently what I was trying to get across in the video, okay? All right, so as with the previous case, you write the general formula of an alkane, CNH2N plus two, and then you put the formula of the number of carbon, so that's 12, right? That's your original, I'm gonna call it original now, and then your given would be C5H12, right? Now. Oh, this is your given compound. Now with, with halogens, we added an extra hydrogen, right? With oxygen, we take no action. Add, no, add or, or remove. We don't do either. Is not allowed. Okay, I meant to say neither, but this is good enough. Okay, so that means you take the original, okay? and then write the given minus the oxygen. Just don't write the oxygen as with the other case. This is your given. So that's zero over two is zero. So in this case, okay, the oxygen is attached to two elements through a single bond because we know there's a zero double bond here, right? So 
as with your other cases, write five carbons and then write the O in the end. This is where things can get tricky, okay? And then write five carbons. Don't rush through this. Take this very easy. Don't, don't stress yourself out. Again, write five more carbons and put the O, okay? Now it's important to recognize that I guess you can now go ahead and add hydrogens to all carbons, okay? But it's important to recognize the rule, oxygen cannot have more than two bonds. One bond is already met here, so the other bond must be on this side and that must be a H. Because if you count, you only have 11 hydrogen so far. So three, five, seven, nine, 11. So the 12th hydrogen gets attached here, which is similar to this. Right? Or you can also write it in line structure as one, two, three, four, five, and then that's where the fifth carbon ends, and then you write OH. Right? Similarly, here you can write hydrogen is here, and then hydrogen is here, and then you can fill the rest with hydrogens. Okay. Oh, this should have been, sorry, just a H and then CH3, right? It's important to recognize based on, this is why we do it this way. I wish my teacher had taught me this. He, he made life more difficult than it ought to be. So again, five dots, five carbons, and this was in the second carbon, OH, okay? Anything with the OH group is known as alcohol, just for your knowledge. Not that we haven't learned this. We have not quite learned it yet, but you know, it doesn't hurt to know that. So if the value is zero, then you must make sure that you attach the hydrogen here, this way, okay? Let's repeat the same, but this time I made sure. So if I do the math here, the original would be C5H12, right? I'm not gonna go into how I did this. You can go back and see how I got the original. The given, again, we don't, with oxygen, we don't add, neither add nor remove, leave it as it is. So two over two is one. Now this is where things get tricky because we're dealing with oxygen and one double bond. So when we write, the double bond could be with the oxygen. This doesn't tell you the double bond is only between carbon and oxygen. It could also be between carbon and carbon. In that case, that's exactly what you are thinking right now. So. I'm going to put the O here and add the double bond to the oxygen. I, that's why I said two to three isomers. One or two of them I'm going to do it this way, and one I'm going to do it a different way. Okay. Now think about this logically. This oxygen is connected to the carbon, and it's already met the requirement of carbon. Oxygen cannot have more than two bonds. But this carbon has only uh, three bonds, so the fourth has to be a hydrogen. A hydrogen cannot go here. Again, this is just is very, very important. I'm just gonna put a star. You have to watch this video at least once to really make sense of it, okay? This is one. Or you can also put the five carbons, right? Sorry, I drew this too long. You can put the double bond O here. Again, oxygen can attach. Because one double bond, we have the option that we can do it this way, okay? Now again, we're learning just a bunch of isomers, but it's important to recognize that you don't violate any rules that we've already learned. This carbon now has four bonds, this oxygen has already met the two bond requirement and that's it, okay? Now, what if you wrote something, this is also, you're wondering, is this correct? Well, the, this does not tell you whether the double bond has to be between carbon and oxygen or between carbon and carbon, but your molecule itself can only have one double bond. So you can also play it different ways, which is you can add the double bond between the carbon. So you've met the requirement, which means your oxygen must be single bond. So you can attach the oxygen here. Now you can have multiple combinations there. We've met the double bond requirement through the carbon and carbon double bond. So you can now put the oxygen anywhere you like and oxygen can only have one bond. In this case, it cannot be double again because then we will have two double bonds, which is not allowed. So this is hydrogen. And, and if you see, this is gonna take a little bit of understanding on your part 
But again, I'm there to help. And you have to count, make sure that the carbon and hydrogen count is correct. Three, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Carbon is five, hydrogen is ten, and oxygen. So this is also a possibility. These two are also correct. If you get an answer of one dB, you can choose to go with the double bond with the carbon or between a carbon, in that case, your oxygen has to be single. When an oxygen is single, it has to have a hydrogen on one end and it can be attached to something else on the other hand. All right, and that's all I have to say on this particular topic. Now, I can give you more example. Let's actually do that, why don't we do that? So C6H, uh, 12O and tri isomers for C6H. Um, I guess H14. Uh, H14. H oh. Okay. Try these and then um, I'll see you with another video.